entertainment will be transformed. Oh, weep grognaw, weep ninibong, my fellow addicts. This is TFA1024 coming at you with yet another TFA review. Before we do begin this video review, I would like to point out a few things that I did make errors in in my previous video reviews. Number one, looking back at Desaurus's video review, I realized that I made a minor spelling mistake during the title card of his uh, appearance whenever he showed up in Beast Mode. So I do apologize for that. Touch screens. What you can you do, man? What can you do? Uh, number two is I mentioned that um, I kept Air Raid, or not Air Raid, Guy Hawk in um, a similar position with his wings to make it look more like Air Raid. Yeah, I was completely wrong. I saw a screenshot, because I've been marathoning Transformers Victory now. I saw a screenshot of him in his jet mode like this. So that is actually the correct configuration for his wings. But again, you know, it's your toy. Display it however you wish, like MGO says. And uh, number three, you may have noticed last time, and then again, you may have not have noticed, but I have an iPad case that I use to record my videos. You know, one of those, like, fold-over bookcase things. Yesterday, when I did Guyhawk's video review, I used this. And this thing was actually very, very cooperative with me, as opposed to this iPad case. So, I might use this thing from now on. And if you have a big lots near you, it came with a stylus, and it also came with a microfiber cloth for like five dollars. So I honestly strongly recommend you guys picking something like this up. This actually really does keep your stuff more stable. But with that out of the way, let me go ahead and switch from the iPad case to this, and we'll go ahead and get right on with the video review. So with the equipment switched, let's go ahead and unearth the Transformers Combiner Wars Platinum Edition Entertainment Earth Exclusive Deluxe Class Drillhorn. And yeah, right off the bat, Drillhorn is making brawls slash nose cones mold work a lot more than I anticipated. I honestly thought it was pretty lazy of Hasbro to kind of pick this mold when they could have done something along the lines of, uh, like Takara Tomy taking the Rook mold and redoing it into nose cone. I thought they would have done the same thing for, like, Drillhorn or Killbison. But I'm glad they didn't, because, again, like Guyhawk... Drillhorn is rocking Brawl's and Nose Cone's mold. He looks really, really good. The complemented colors of blue with the light white and the accents of silver lining as well as the black and yellow throughout all this figure, throughout the vehicle mode, I mean, really make this mold work in terms of coloring. Now, of course, he does have the same issues as the Brawl mold. Uh, things don't always like to tab together. Sometimes the connection is a little bit loose, but it's nothing that you're, you know, you need to freak out about or anything. Now, unfortunately, on mine, it does have a minor paint error right there where you see that little bit of uh, paint chipping. But it's totally okay. It's just, it's nothing but a little bit of silver, man. It ain't gonna hurt anything. That's all it is. And I kind of like it. Kind of gives him a very, very, very minor, like, weathered effect. Like, maybe it's just a tiny scar. Maybe it's a blemish that he had with, he scanned the vehicle mode. Maybe he just wanted it there. He's like, I'm going to put this little bit of silver right there. Eh, yeah, it looks nice. I, I don't know. Uh, to give you a little bit of info on Drillhorn, though, he is the Breast Force veteran strategist. He is pretty much like the Transformers Armada thrust, but without all the evil scheming behind the main guy's back or anything like that. He follows orders, he is a respectable soldier, and he makes sure things go according to plan. Which is pretty cool. He also has a very cool voice, despite it being in Japanese, but he has a really cool voice. I like him. So, Now, for option's sake, you can take off this drill part right here and plug it using that peg right there. Or you can just keep it the way it is. It is pretty much on like a friction hinge joint, and it will pop out somewhat easily. Getting it back in, though, is going to be a pain in the butt. But, you know... It is what it is. You can't really do much about it. And, of course, that also does hinder some clearance issues. Um, you can pretty much see that that is right there. It's not 
it's not fully touching it, but it is touching it to a degree where there isn't enough clearance. And I think mine is actually on sideways or something. I don't know. Is it just me? Does it look like slightly, slightly tilted to you guys? I feel like it is. I don't know. It's no big deal. But, you know. He, like I said, though, he does really rock this mold. And, of course, you have the nice tampered Decepticon insignias on the right side, on the left side, and for the sake of robot mode, on his left pectoral plate. So, that looks cool. Looks very cool. And, of course, he does have visible head syndrome right there. It, it, it's right there. We'll get to that in a minute, though. And, like I said, he has the nice black, silver, and yellow lines throughout the tank mode, and it looks really good. So... So for a quick size comparison, here is Drillhorn next to his previous reviewed buddy, Guyhawk. And they look really great together. Like I said, that's sort of something that's been going along the lines of all the limbs. So that yellow, black, and silver stripe looks really good. Kind of gives it that uniform look. So there you have that. Now, of course, Drillhorn does come with accessories, unlike every other Transformer, I mean, most like every other Transformer figure, talk TFA, dang it. He does come with a hand foot gun, this time picked out in white plastic, which is sort of meant to uniform that of his tank and robot mode. And I think it's a really good way to match, to make sure that you know this one belongs to him, as opposed to looking at the hinge and be like, oh, does this one go to him? And even if you, you know, you knew, they both do have the white hinges. I do believe both feet have the white hinges, just like the black feet. Nope. Okay then. Different, but weird. And you can take it and you can plug it in right here if you really want to, but again, clearance, that canopy section will do that. So, maybe you could do something like this, give him a little bit of a afterburner. Maybe a little bit of a mobile turret for the back. But, you know how I like to do things. You just fold up that fun fold up that fun, fold up that thumb, and there you go, you have a dual-barreled turret on his back. It looks really, really cool, so, you need to just put it away, whatever. And then, like with Hellbat, I mentioned that he came with two black guns, but you're supposed to give one to Drillhorn and one to Kill Bison, and then you give the white ones to Guyhawk and Hellbat, he even says right there on the picture. See it? So you take this, and you can plug it in, right here, and you can still give him a double-barreled turret. So there you have that. So with all that pretty much out of the way, uh, yeah, enough about tank mode. Like I said, tank mode, he rocks the mold, absolutely rocks the mold. I love the way he looks. But not much to say about that, other than it's a cool-looking tank. The blue and the white really complement the mold a lot more than it does with Nose Cone or Brawl. And I likes it. So, with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get Drill Horn from looking like this <laughs> to revealing the robot within. And like I mentioned with Guyhawk as well as Dustsaurus in their robot modes, Drill Horn was made for this mold. Just, he was absolutely made for this mold. I really, really like the way it came out. Because and please correct me in the comment section if I'm wrong about this. I do believe Drillhorn was a repaint in Takara from the Generation 1 nose cone toy. And he pretty much had, like, the tread arms as well as, like, the drill back and everything. Um, but unfortunately, you know, for this particular figure, he, he's not able to have that drill back. But what he can do is you can emulate it some way. You can pretty much take the drill here and you can plug it right here, but I don't think you want to do that because then it kind of looks a little bit, uh... You put the pieces together, I ain't saying it. This is a kid's show. What's wrong with you? I mean, you can do it, but it's not a necessity. Uh, and then you can also do this and sort of give him a tail, but again, not even. Mm. No, thank you. No, I'm good. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. So... And I'm coming right here on the head sculpt, and uh, let me go ahead and fix that clarity just a little bit, because we want it to look nice. There you go. Taking a look at that gorgeous head sculpt with a nice regular robotic face with the nose, mouth, and the robo-chin, with those 
beautiful, because I'm a sucker for this color, those beautiful red eyes, and that nice new rhino helmet. Now, like I mentioned with Guyhawk previously, I wish there was a way for Hasbro to kind of pick out those indents in some nice red paint, but it's not a necessity, and it doesn't take anything away from the figure. The figure alone still looks great, despite it being a slight retool of the Brawl mold as Drillhorn, but it works. It works very, very well. Very pleased with how it came out. Now, articulation-wise, his head is on a mushroom peg. It can rotate 360 degrees. You can go ahead and actually take the horn and, like, angle it back, but you want to keep it out for robot mode because he had that in his character model. The shoulders here are on a rotator joint as well as a soft ratcheted hinge that will go in and out 360 degrees and such. The forearms themselves are on a small hinge that will only allow them to bend backward because they're supposed to be for transformation. And the peg right there kind of prevents that hinge from going any further. So unless you want a broken brawl mold, be my guest. But don't push it beyond its limits. That's something I strongly advise against. The forearms themselves are on ball joints. They will bend at the 90 degrees, if not more. Actually, I think it is just 90 degrees for the tank treads. Yep. So, um... They will bend 90 degrees, they will rotate 360 degrees. No wrist articulation, but like with Guyhawk, what he loses in wrists, he makes for up, makes up for in waist. And the waist is on a mushroom peg that will allow it to go 360 degrees. He does have an ab crunch, thanks to the double hinge in his stomach area. The hips are on a ball joint, they will go forward, back, in and out, and swivel a little bit. The thighs themselves are on mushroom pegs, and... Something a little bit different for these for this guy here. He has ankle pivots. Accompanied with dual hinges. Right in there. So you can totally get him in some pretty dynamic poses. If you so wish. So. There's Drillhorn. And here he is for size comparison. Here he is with his lord and master of the Destrons. Death Sonus. And he looks. He looks great. Try not to droop. Try not to droop. There you go. Yeah, it's slowly drooping, but that's okay. And they look great together, so there you go. And just because I like to tease you, you guys know what you're getting into by now. Here he is for tomorrow's video review next to... Hey, Beto! And I love the fact that we have two blue-colored characters on the same team but they differentiate it with a lighter blue and a darker blue, and it looks really, really good. So, there you go. There is that. So, yeah. Drillhorn. I didn't mention this in Guyhawk's video review, even though I totally meant to. I just made a minor error again. I'm sorry. Uh, if you totally wish to go after him and Drillhorn here, by all means, go on eBay. Look for some cheap listings for these guys and pick them up. While they may not be necessities for your collection, they are a nice addition to your Decepticons. So by all means, go ahead and pick them up. So yeah, bots and fembots, I think that's pretty much all there is to say in this video review. So this has been the video review for the Transformers Combiner Wars Platinum Edition Entertainment Earth Exclusive Deluxe Class Drill On! And I want to thank each and every one of you all for watching. Please be sure to like, comment, share, and of course, subscribe, because this is the only channel where your entertainment will be transformed. And, of course, please remember, until next time, to get addicted, stay addicted, and TF Addicts for life! This is TFA 1024, the Transformers Addict, rolling out till all are one.